Chris Dairo KTN News. Thank you, Chris, for that. Time now for that conversation with my guest, that is Nadia Ahmed Abdallah, or should I say Honorable Nadia Ahmed Abdallah. She is the former CS, that is the Chief Administrative Secretary of ICT um, Innovation and Youth Affairs, uh, and she was the CAS in Uhuru's government. Thank you so much, Nadia, for making time for yeah, us. You're most welcome. Great. And, you know, when we spoke, um, you know, Early on, uh, about a few weeks ago, you're trying to harmonize and see well, uh, you know, your time and your schedule. Yeah. You told me you were clearing, uh, yeah. I mean, and handing over to, uh, you know, your roles and uh, the yeah. ministry. Yeah. How did that go, and what was going on <laughs> through your mind as you're going through that uh, clearing process? <laughs> Thank you. Um, what was going through my mind? It was, it was an emotional thing for me. Uh -huh. I mean, it still is. I still feel like um, I'm very much attached to not the role uh -huh. but more of the impact that i made okay. and the people that i was working with mm -hmm. but it was good um so because of our ministry was a two i would say two chunk ministry there was ict there was broadcasting then there was youth affairs so we went through first handing over to um the new cabinet secretary for ict and mm -hmm. digital economy mm -hmm. and then uh, cs owalo and then last week or this uh, thursday mm -hmm. we handed over to cs ababu uh, mm -hmm. because he's now the minister for youth sports and arts uh -huh. yeah so it's i i went through it twice mm. uh, it was a process but of course there's still things that um that i've worked there for and with that i'm still so i'm still like uh, hands-on while I, I i wait sort of nost was it uh, a process full of nostalgia yes it was uh -huh. because for me i feel like as much as i feel like i've had 10 year experience in two years and 10 months um it's it's it really grew me because I went in without knowing anything about national government or how systems work in public service. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now I am well versed on it. And yeah. It's like you you say it's been two years, 10 months. Uh, yes. It could be a long and short time, depending yes. on how you look at it. Yeah. I want you to take us back to the day okay. that the call came in or you know how you received the news. Yeah, Where yeah. were you? How was it communicated? Was it by a yeah. phone call? Yeah. What were you doing? Uh, no, there was no phone call. Uh -huh. um, and I tell people the same way you get the job is the same way you have to you know give it up because uh -huh. i i found out on te television okay. yeah i was in mombasa i remember mm -hmm. and uh you know minding my business and uh next thing you know i get a call from a friend mm -hmm. telling me that the former president mentioned your name mm -hmm. and then i got the clip mm -hmm. and i was like oh wow okay and first i didn't even know what the position was about i was just excited that mm -hmm. a president called me so you know it's it's that mm -hmm. but uh yeah it's been a fulfilling experience and so you said that of course now you had to clear from your previous job yes mm -hmm. yes 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 i was actually the chief tourism officer in uh, Mombasa County, but uh -huh. just for four months, okay. and then this this happened. So I had to, you know, hand in my letter. Mm -hmm. I had to then we got sworn in, and then I had to move to Nairobi. So it was like a pop, pop, pop kind of thing. Mm -hmm. First, yeah. Um, I, how, how, why do you think the president chose you um, for that role of CAS? Okay, I think uh, first of all because there was a need for incorporating young people when it comes to policy on a very high level and I believe it was m the way I maximized my voice and my space and my intention when it comes to youth affairs, when it comes to women affairs and when it comes to technology. Um, a lot of times you know most of us young people are always on the side of government is not doing enough but I remember very, very well I'm on the side of these are the solutions that you can do and so I think that and being vocal and putting myself out there caught someone's eye and his pre the, pre the, the former president's eye and one mm -hmm. thing led to another and God's hands, mm -hmm. I, yeah. So it pretty much in public service you had only, I mean, as CEO tourism, you had yeah. only done four months. Yes. That, that's what may have, uh, you know, sort of prepared you yes. to embark on public service. And mm. I, would, I, I, I wouldn't I say prepared uh -huh. though. Uh, so chief tourism officer it's not really it's a it's a junior job uh -huh. okay and for me i was more focused on okay let's see how we're going to make tourism better, better. um and mm -hmm. everything so i didn't really focus on me being a public servant uh -huh. then okay. it was more of tourism this is home uh -huh. it's something that i need to do mm -hmm. but then when now now i joined national government it then dawned on me that you know what this is a larger scale mm -hmm. and you have to actually be part and parcel of it and take it in as your own mm. 
yeah. The swearing in happened and then our first day in office. Yes, so when yes. you landed, I mean, um, it was a new role. So yes, yes yeah. uh, your first day in office. Uh, I mean, what did you do? What were your, or your what was your entry, your yeah. outry? What, yeah. what no, I'll tell you the first time in office, of course, you had to meet the former CS, get updated and everything. But I remember it was a time when my late mom was going through cervical uh, treatment for cervical cancer. Mm. And I knew that the first thing I needed to do was bring her to the office. So that's what happened. Uh -huh. I brought her to the office with my with my uh, my aunt and she saw it and for me that was fulfilling because you know you're seeing this person who struggled to raise you and give you all the values and now you got to that point mm. but then after that I cried <laughs> <laughs> I cried I cried because I will number one I was in disbelief and number two I felt like this huge chunk of responsibility on me because you know we had like, like the first lot of young people and then me being the youngest mm. I'm supposed to make sure I work I'm supposed to make sure I act well and I'm supposed to represent young women and young people mm -hmm. you can imagine how much pressure that is as well so mm. I cried but then I have I had a good team mm -hmm. I had a good team that uh, took me through and uh, yeah Manish, I think I did I did pretty well mm. <laughs> what is the thing that shocked you about public service I mean at 29 yeah. having been appointed to what it would be called sort of a junior role in the ministry but yeah. still in several eyes it's quite yeah. a senior role yeah what is the thing yeah. that perhaps shocked you yeah or impressed you yeah in the ministry? so correction it's mm -hmm. a very senior role uh -huh. because you are deputizing the cabinet secretary okay. so whenever he assigns you to a certain task mm -hmm. you have to do it uh -huh. um what i think was um what i've learned is that it doesn't matter uh, what your age is and it doesn't matter the people around you how old they are yeah. what matters is that role that you're given mm -hmm. so if you are a CAS everybody no matter their age they'll treat you like that and what you need to do you need to now be that leader because everybody will now look up to you for solutions mm -hmm. will look up to you for guidance will look up to you for advice and so you have to carry all that and emulate like this confident and very strong and strategic person mm. yeah because the conversations around the appointment or the creation of yeah. the position of yeah. chief administrative secretaries yeah. was seen as a way of president uhuru from a president yeah. rewarding his you know political friends yeah and when you came in there was quite a question and you know a buzz around i mean yeah. was nadia how did you come in yeah did you shake off do you, how did you manage to shake off that tag of you know rebo being um, rewarded i think i i ignored it uh -huh. because for me it was this situation i'm 29 i needed to build my profile yeah. so everybody else is gonna say whatever they want to say i never participated in any politics or campaigns or whatever mm -hmm. i was just a normal person who was just trying to do my best yeah. and hustle my way around mm -hmm. and so when people were talking and everything i chose intentionally to focus on my productivity mm -hmm. and to focus on my impact and to focus on opening doors mm -hmm. i really didn't listen to whatever people say everyone has their own opinion and mm -hmm. if people don't talk about it, then you're not actually doing something great so yeah. i'm pretty sure that Indeed. was the case we'll get back now to you know your tenure there what you yes. did what you yes. were able to achieve but let's go back to your childhood okay uh, i gather you were born in the coastal city of yeah, Mombasa. Mombasa yes. um how did life growing up yeah because you were quite you know your, your, your profile is one that speaks for itself yeah you um you know define yourself as quote-unquote black sheep yeah. rebellious <laughs> These are some of the things that you yeah. know even in your books that you've written yeah uh, you describe yourself in yeah. as that yeah. um how was your upbringing yeah. in your childhood my upbringing um to be honest was quite good um i was raised in a blended family huh. what blended family means is that you know proper mom dad divorce then you get incorporated into another family okay. but i was always surrounded by strong women my grandma to my aunties to my late mom mm -hmm. everyone but also like one thing that my family did including like my stepfather was really invest in my education so one thing i'll tell you is that being this typical swahili girl from mombasa education to me was literally number one mm. so my parents really made sure that i get that a lot but then i grew up as a person who i had i was very opinionated and that's why i call myself black sheet because mm -hmm. I, I could see how people were, were around. I could see how women had amazing and fantastic profiles, but everybody was kind of like taking a step back. Nobody wanted to be too vocal. And so I found that to be really weird. I think subconsciously mm -hmm. and because I was reading a lot of books and getting exposed to a lot of things I decided I'm going to be that girl who's always going to speak mm -hmm. of course that had a lot of issues because some people in the family find that 
very outrageous. Some people in the community find that, oh, if you do this too much, you won't get married. But I had a very strong support system, which was my late mom, my aunties, my stepfather, my brother, my friends, everyone, where they made sure that I stay grounded. And so what I did pushed my way around, but I used education as my basis mm. to actually move from one step to another. And so, that's why I always mm. tell people, mm -hmm. education, no matter what your background is, if you have that chance, go ahead and make the best out of it. Mm. Yeah. How was, you know, how are you interacting with your schoolmates, classmates yeah. from primary school? Talk to us <laughs> about, you know, your education <laughs> from primary I was uh, a drama school. queen. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was how such so? a drama queen. Uh -huh. So I, I, I went through a lot of identity crisis yeah. because on one side I don't fit in here, I don't fit in there. And so I was always trying to fight to fit in by the same time create my own why personality. Not, why, why did you feel you were not fitting in? Because I, I, I was different. Uh -huh. um, I, I was blunt. Uh -huh. um, and then I had this thing growing up uh, where I needed people to accept me. And this was because, you know, childhood, when sometimes you're raised in a family where mom and dad are not together, you always tend to fight for attention. So I think that kind of became one of my personality traits. And so when I go to school, if it's not about me, I had to make it about me. Uh. <laughs> so I was that kind of girl. Mm -hmm. um, but then I realized that as I go, and in primary I experienced bullying because, you know, chubby girl, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Well, these people are bullying me now. They find me cool. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> yeah, but the means. Yes, but I went through that. So like primary bullying, high yeah. school identity crisis. But then in university, that's when I found my voice. Mm. That's when I found my space. And that's when I found my confidence even more. Mm. And now that's what helped me to be who I am today. Mm. Yeah. Because you, you gained education here yes. as well as in Malaysia. Yes, I gained education here. I did my bachelor's in PR and communication in Malaysia. Mm. Then I went to Germany and did my master's in uh, international relations and cultural diplomacy. Mm. Yeah, so a bit of everything. You were quite fiery and you seem to be like a go-getter. So someone yeah. who, you know, once you set your ideas or your eyes to something, yeah. you want to achieve it. Yes. Um, is that why you think perhaps you may have been able to achieve success mm. in such perhaps a short time even yeah. before you you know cross over from yeah. the youth years yeah. um yeah it is because one thing i learned ever from a very young age is that yeah. intention discipline and consistency really helps mm -hmm. and so for me because i was so adamant to really be something in the world and i was not even i didn't even have a kenyan vision mine was a global vision mm -hmm. i wanted to make sure that a girl like me and girls who look like me can actually see mm. that they can mm. get there mm. and so i always worked on something so for me I've, i always have a something on my sleeve yeah. that's when when i got into government as well i said i'm gonna make sure i don't know how much time i have but the time that i have i'm gonna make sure people will always remember me mm -hmm. and that's why i was specific and intentional worked with young people but at the same time yeah, worked with young women mm. and used campaigns and programs and just being authentic because people forget leadership these days mm. generation gen z and us millennial it's all about impact yeah. it's all about how are you relating to them mm -hmm. what are you showing them how are you showing them how to make money how are you showing them how to work and so these are the things that every transition that i go through i kind of like identify what is the need mm -hmm. at that particular point uh -huh. and i knew that when i was a, um, a cis the need was Young Kenyans wanted to see if a young person, when they are put in government, if they can do something and if they can open doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've said you have something on your, you always have something in your always, sleeve. Always. And if, uh, you know, young people, of course, wanted to see what you yes. you did or you've done so far. Yeah. And we'll get to that shortly after this commercial break. Yeah. When we come back, we continue with the conversation with Nadia Ahmed Abdallah, who is the former CAS, Chief Administrative Secretary in ICT Youth Affairs as well as Innovation. Do stay with us. KTN News. Get the whole story. With Cooperative Bank pre-owned car finance, anyone with an income can walk into a second-hand dealership and choose a car that best suits them within an 8-year age limit and also get to enjoy 100% financing. It's simple. With Cooperative Bank, don't dream it, drive it, and we will help you buy it. Talk to us today on 0703-027-000. Cooperative Bank. We 
are you? any comments, queries or complaints regarding our news content. You can get in touch with us on SMS 22155, call 0719-012-450 or email feedback at standardmedia.co.ke or you can send us a letter on Post Office Box 30080-00100 or deliver it to our offices at Standard Group Centre, Mombasa Road, Nairobi. I was already 26 years, actually used to be age mate with my teachers. Can I be a meme stuck in like a crime? Kumbe, all this time, the guy had someone else who was already pregnant and had already been introduced for. Chale, ni changamoto sana pale geto ama mtaani. Kwa ni kuna kitu poa ineza toka geto. Just as those people came through for me, I want to come through for another child. 